O oh God Almighty, we humble ourselves before you in a face plant, a body plant, asking you to forgive us, to grant us peace, to come into our hearts, to grant us the strength to be like Christ, to have the wisdom, strength, and peace. Let us truly seek you in our hearts and follow you when you speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Before we get started, um, I might get a phone call. If I do, I'll, I'll explain it, but I would like to go ahead and put that on screen, Justin, if you would, please. Maybe not. Yeah, yes, sir. It actually worked. I would like to um, say a few things before we get started. I can do this in about 20 minutes or 30 minutes, but I want to take a minute and give references. Anytime that we do sing anything, I would suggest this is our reference first and foremost. I prefer the King James. It's archaic, but it is the best and has the least amount of errors in it for study purposes, especially in Leviticus. The other thing I wanted to show you was something that really impressed me. And, and before I did this um, sermon and actually got it finished, I actually did it before I watched this. Scott Ritzma, Technocracy, What Comes Next. It is just awesome. It is awesome. So I guess that's a plug for them. Tracy is the one that got this program to me, and she also is plugged in to him to get other uh, DVDs. And some are in the library. The other one is a book that I have just, I haven't even started it. I went through part of it, finished the preface. You may or may not like stuff like this, but this is Joe Allen's. It, it's kind of a guide to what's going on with technocracy and what's going on with artificial intelligence. So it's worthwhile reading. I never put anything above scripture, but it can add, it can add to our enlightenment. So, let's start. Are we up? We are. How did we do that? Anyway, first came creation. Well, let's start over. Our enemy is not artificial intelligence or transhumanism. It's not. It might be later. It's jaw-dropping. My daughter uses robotics and surgery. She explained some of that, and I just hit the floor. I just cannot believe that not only is it that good, but we rely on artificial intelligence so much today. This isn't coming. It's here. But first came creation with the ancients. And then sin. Evil cannot create, but can and did impersonate. So the evolution theory became a way to replace and to deny God. The followers of this movement are known as the evolutionists, which are based their theory on what? Science, but also heavily on their opinions. Justin can do an entire series on that. He's really into this. And that's an oops. What popped up? Somehow I just want the center. I did something wrong. But we'll go with what we have. Too late now. Out of the sciences came evolution. And fast forward to today, the sciences are using evolution to try and create Homo sapien 2.0. And the reason I'm doing it this way 
because if something goes wrong with technology while we're doing a live stream, if something goes wrong, whether I'm speaking or someone else, you can read it. So if you can read it in the back and you can hear it, great. If you can see me, I, it doesn't really matter. Since Satan, the serpent, the devil, cannot create, he is trying to destroy God's creation, which includes mankind by using artificial intelligence as an introduction to the brave new world. Who doesn't want a new world? Who doesn't want utopia? Been talking about it for centuries. So as an introduction to a brave new world in which without God, man can become immortal. So isn't, wouldn't that be utopia? Is that the, the old rock and roll songs and stuff from years ago? It's still in there. It's still the French kind of attitude from the French Revolution. Burn the books, burn God, get rid of God, no guilt. Bring back the guillotine. Let's get rid of all the bad guys. <clears throat> well, no God, no law. No law, no sin. No sin, no guilt. And without guilt, along with immortality, wouldn't that be utopia? For some. There's just one problem with that. It would be a post-God and a post-human world. You want to live in that? No God, no man, emerging of man and machine. And that's where this is headed. It's really kind of freaky. But I'm not losing sleep over it. And I really hope and pray no one here loses sleep over it. Because they're, everybody has a toolbox, right? And out of those things, some we're born with, some we learn, some we educate or self-educate. I would prefer to be a tool for God. I would prefer not to be Satan's little puppet. And I've been that since I was born. And the reality is, we have to make those choices. Only we can do that. Now, I don't know what's going on here, but I just figured it out. Sorry. We'll get it eventually. Satan wants what he could never have. What did he want in the beginning? First of all, he was created. Was he created this ugly beast? Did he look like a beast? He is a beast, but does he look like one? He was the most, correct, beautiful, created being. That's scary. And how is he going to deceive us? Because we are what we, what we eat, and he had a bowl of stupid for breakfast? No. He is very intelligent. He is very attractive. And he knows in how to practice this for thousands of years. And he's an expert. He's an expert because this is who he is and what he does. But he can't create life. Only God can create life. So even though he wants what he could never have, he wanted to be like God, he wanted to create, he wanted to be worshipped. And through willing mankind, who's joined at the hip with evil, he found a way, or he may have found a way, through artificial intelligence. By the creation of artificial intelligence and transhumanism, the sciences, well, they're using these also to establish the new religion that's coming. You think it's Christian religion? You think it may be the Muslim religion? You may think it's a different religion? They're already talking about this as a religion. It will be a world religion. I'm not saying this is going to happen. But these are serious possibilities. The globalist leadership actually are the ones that want to be worshipped. 
by me and by you. Incorrect English, it's you and I. You know, it, it's just the devil. It's not science. It's not the, it's the motivation that's behind all of this. It's evil. They're not doing it for mankind. What, what have we done with wars? We're testing how to kill. We have new weapons. And out of those weapons, we make other weapons to defend ourselves. It's a constant ping pong being back and forth. <clears throat> Excuse me, back and forth. And that's the way it's been since, well, forever. In order to make this work, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think they can just come out and really tell you what's going to go on? Do you think Satan knocks on your door, gives you dreams, and hey, man, I'm going to help you out. I, I'm here. I love you. Hey, bro, what's happening? No. In order to make all this work, It'll be sold to the public as, as the gospel. It'll be a big fat lie. And the future will only be with science. This will be projected as our only salvation. And how many people are aware of true salvation? Apparently we are. We're here. Other people that attend different churches are aware of it. But to what extent? So follow the science. Have you ever heard that? How'd that work out? Let's follow the science. I don't want, I don't want to get into that because it's really a touchy subject for me because my son was threatened to be unemployed if he didn't do something, and he did it four times. And then he collapsed in a parking lot. A virus went from his lungs to his heart. And to this day, he is really messed up. So you can blame the science, you can blame, well, stuff happens. He just got sick. I don't know. I have no idea, and I'm not going to blame anybody. But facts are facts, and I'm trying to keep my opinions out of it. And it's tough. It is really tough. So when all these things start piling up, and maybe people say, nah, I don't want to do that. What do you think is going to happen? Somebody's just going to knock on your door and say, boy, I really wish you'd do that. I just love you so much. No, there'll be some muscle behind it. Look at the people. I, I remember seeing a, a young lady forgot or unwilling to put a mask on in England, and a cop grabbed her by the throat. I mean, I, I just, I don't understand that kind of stuff. But the muscle will follow when technocracy is not a tool, but the only tool they may use, may use. And is, it, is that the possibility of a digital immortality? Could we become forced to do that? I don't know. I'm wanting to read, I'm wanting to pray. That's all I can do is study and pray and ask God to lead me. But I have to be able to listen. I can't do it my way. I can't be pounding, ah, it's got to be this way. You've got to do what I say. That doesn't work. You're not, I'm not following God if I'm uh, just pushing myself forward. Because then I'm saying, hey, look at me. I, I don't want that. I don't. I want to be tuned in to what God has to tell me. But I have to be willing to listen. And it's not always easy. You know, sometimes we have so much going on, we can't decipher really what's going on in reality. You turn the TV on, everybody's lying. Is that true? I don't know. Is the old wives' tale that you know when a politician is lying because his lips are moving? I don't know. I'm just trying to filter out the best I can with Holy Scripture, with my Lord and Savior, who has done more for me than anybody on the planet. That's a bigoted <laughs> comment. I feel I'm more blessed. Most people look at me and say, whoa, what a train wreck. How would you get through that? You guys will never know, because I'm not going to tell you my story. But I'm here. 
and I want to serve my God. This is a multi-pronged attack on humanity by evil. Satan, no, he's knowingly. He's running out of time. So when he slaps you in the face or he slaps me in the face, just speak up and say, back off, bud, because your time is limited, just like mine, except I know where I'm going. Oh, wait a minute, so do you. Because when he runs out of time, he knows where he's going. So where do we want to be when we wake up? Which resurrection is really basic. Lots of people want to argue over, over Scripture. No, not me. So as time goes together, and as we race along in this new evolution of humanity that evil has planned for us, the Homo sapien 2.0, It's scary. It's exciting. It's really exciting. It's exciting because I'm at peace with what's going on. My hair's not on fire. And if it was, with the amount that I have, it'd be like lighting a match and blowing it out, and poof, it's gone. I don't have a lot of hair, so the the hair on fire thing ain't going to work. But everything is done step by step with AI. It is truly jaw-dropping. The technology that has has grown just in the last two years or has been exposed in the last few years is just utterly amazing. Things that were science-based movies, think back to The Terminator and that kind of stuff, Arnold Schwarzenegger, who, by the way, If you're watching, Arnold, I I didn't appreciate your comments about our rights. A lot of people didn't. But the jaw-dropping performances is going to allow this ushering in of the T-man, the the transhumanism. And with all the robotics, that's going to equate to our future. So what are we going to do about it? Well, what are you going to do about it? The older people may not be around, but the younger people are going to have to face this. My kids, my grandkids, great-grandkids. Humanity has to, to find out a way to cope with this. And the major advancements in AI from companies like Google, Anthropic, OpenAI, Microsoft, Meta, Amazon, Plantier, and the multiple startup companies, I want to make a correction on that. It's not just multiple companies. It's hundreds of them now. It is a global competition, and it's based on power and money. So if you want to invest something, and you want to make some money, pray you don't get hung up on it. Yeah, AI. It's going to be a really big turnover for the stock market. And that goes right back into politics. But all these companies are doing it Not for you, not for us, definitely not for Christians. You're on their hit list. But it's the military interest, it's the worldwide government interest, it's the stock market, Fifth Avenue interest. It's all about money and control and fear. Why do they fear? Why are they so afraid? Because they know they're going to die. And they don't want to die. They want to be immortal. But they don't want to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. Look at what's going on now overseas. Two countries going at it. Sorry, I feel bad for you. But neither country believes in Jesus Christ. At least that I'm aware of. And Christ says what? No one goes to the Father without what? through him. You know, this this whole thing with the medical, I, I think is kind of a shoe in to get things started because of the advancements. And I have to tell you, some of the things that I've gone through, I wouldn't be in as good a shape as I am without medical science. And there is medical science. But when the military becomes involved, or law enforcement, Yeah, that's scary stuff. That's very scary. The digital 
Darwinism is here. Anybody here of the World Economic Forum? Anybody ever hear of Klaus Schwab? Well, he's the chairman of the World Economic Forum, and he was raving at the 2023 World Economic, Economic Forum World Government Summit. Connect those two dots. That's just scary to me. But he's saying that in, in our life in 10 years will be completely different. And he promised. He promised. And who makes those technologies in some way will be the masters of the world. Quote, unquote. So this is about power. This is about money. It's, it's about being worshipped. Let's face it, it's just flat evil. Humanity 2.0, the evolution of, he of human beings, merging with machines, sounds like a mad scientist in a movie. And it is. It really is. All those old movies that I watched as a kid, coming true. How about prophecy? Scripture. Prophecy. Is it conditional or unconditional? Some of this is just flat outright unconditional. It's going to happen. Will this be a part of it? I don't know. I'm not going to be hiding under the bed or sleeping with one eye open, but it's concerning. It's very concerning. So what's our options? Fight or flight? Well, you can fly anywhere you want, but you will be affected. You can fight it to a point, but it's got to start with standing up against evil. Well, there's nothing I can do. I only get one vote. Well, that's better than nothing. That's better than hiding under the bed. If you think it won't happen, AI is just one of the stepping stones that will be coming into our lives. Remember COVID? the world's reaction, the governments, the law enforcement, the control. I agreed with some of that, by the way. Something had to be done because of the information we were given. You can only absorb and digest what we have. How do you offset the, tr the information? How do you know it's true or not? Well, my station says this, and my I've heard people in this church arguing over that. I hear people arguing all, all the time over different things. You know, the apple of Eden from the tree of knowledge offered immortality and to be like God, the serpent said. How'd that work out? They were blocked from getting to the other tree. What was the other tree? Life. Tree of life. And why is that? That would have given them immortality. Though well, for me at my age, looking at them at, what, 900 years? That looked pretty good to me. But it's not immortality. So now an Apple and other com uh, companies, excuse me, may offer someday similar sales pitches. We can offer you immortality. So when your life is about done, we can transfer you to a chip and we will put that chip into something else. Maybe an assembly line, I don't know. But if it goes into a self-reproducing robot of some kind that's creepy to me that goes back to no humans and no god so let us remember our history as we plan our futures here's a list of uh well everything i use for a reference i'm not going to go through all those but there's a few i'd like to read and bear with me our scripture today was 36, 1 to 4. I'd like to drop down and just make a few comments about some, some of the things that are listed here for continued reading beyond Psalm 36, 1 to 4. There's Psalm 37, 1 to 3, Psalm 36, the reality of two worlds, and we do have two worlds. And if the veil were to be replaced, 
if the veil were to be lifted and you could actually see the other dimension and see what evil really is sitting out here or sitting with us, you'd also see God's angels. Psalm 37, trust in the Lord. 38, forgive my sins. 39, my hope is in you. And one of these I got out of sequence. So if there's an error, I made a mistake. 43, hope in God. And Psalm 44, let me get to that. I'd like to read that. Psalm 44, 20 to 21. Would God not, excuse me, would not God search this out? For he knows the secrets of our heart. Yet for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. I went over that. Is that is that how we feel sometimes? We're just being led to slaughter? Well, our salvation is important. Our salvation is available to us. No one can take it. You can surrender it, but no one can take it. Romans 2, 2 Corinthians 4, 3 through 6. And the reason I'm kind of cutting this short, um, I'm waiting on a phone call, so we may have an early out or a long break between the sermon and class. First John, let me get to that. First John 5, 19. First John 5, 19 to 21. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under what? Under the sway of the wicked one. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true. In his Son, Jesus Christ, this is the true and eternal life. Little children, Keep yourselves from idols. Amen. You might say, well, what's an idol? Anything you put before God. Wife, husband, girlfriend, boyfriend, dog, cat, whatever is keeping you from the cross or interfering with that could be an idol because it's your priority. It could be your money. I know people that are so, so into that. And without it, we'd be in big trouble. God's character is the polar opposite of Satan. God loves the sinner. He loves me. I'm a sinner. Occasionally, maybe intentionally. Maybe I thought something, man, I'd just like to say this or do that. And then I have to ask for, for the forgiveness. And sometimes that's hard. It's like, well, everybody's got this thing about, well, who's your brother? Well, who is your brother? you got to love your brother. Who is your brother? Is he just somebody that's in church? Is it somebody that's a devout Christian? Is it somebody on the street? That would be a good Bible study, wouldn't it? Who is your real brother? But he loves us unconditionally. Can we do that? Can you love someone unconditionally? You know, there's something called righteous indignation, and that's nothing more than justified anger. And at some point, we might have to say something. We might have to stand up and be heard. That's one thing that I've learned through life, you know, is being a little puppy dog didn't get me anywhere. Being muzzled or led didn't do anything. But at some point, I had to stand up. And at some point, we may have to, at least in a spiritual sense. My take 
is that I'm only here a short time. Decades have rolled by. Decades. I have a lot more behind me than I have in front of me. And when, you, when you're at that pivotal point, you're thinking, whoa, that went by fast. Look at all these pictures. Kodak moments. But God's time is eternal. Heaven will be eternal. Our time here is just poof. Just a short time. So to me, it's just a test. It's a trial. What are we going to do with it? Jesus is God in the flesh. So dare we ask, was or is Jesus some type of transhuman? Combining man with God's spirit? Not machine. Not a computer. He doesn't need that. The largest computer on the planet is where? Not here anymore. China. My computer is failing. The face of evil is Satan. Evil wants to hurt and destroy God and everything God created, including you and I, all of mankind. AI is a step into transhumanism, which will replace mankind. If you think the current fears and savagery, is anybody tuned in to see what's going on overseas? I don't mean just in Gaza. In France, in England, the things that are going on in public. Pretty bad. So if you think that's bad, if you think that's fearful, well, be assured, more to come. And compare your life now to your own in the past. Are you better now? Are you worse now? We're closer to the end. All that stuff, they've been saying that for thousands of years. That just tells me we're even closer. We're even closer. And that goes back, that just goes back to me. I don't want to argue. You do anything you want. You, I, I, somebody used to really get on me. Well, you're an Adventist. You can't do this. You can't do that. Or your church don't allow this. They don't, you know, there's not a list of do's and don'ts. I can do anything I want. But I choose not to. Do anything you want. We have options. But Satan, like we just read a moment ago, it's kind of his planet. Seems to be winning. More people seem to be for him and against God than for God. Have you ever taken a... Uh, anybody cook? Anybody bake? I used to really... I used to do a little bit of cooking. I don't do that anymore. It's like microwave or a bag of chips. or and I, I'm exaggerating, but um, I used to cook a little bit, and I was actually fair at best. And if you take a five-pound bag of sugar, and you're going to bake something, and you want to pour it into another container or use all of it, you turn it upside down, you shake it out. Most of it goes where you want it. Some of it goes here and there. What's left in the bag? Not much. That's the way I feel about humanity and Christianity because when you turn the world upside down and it shakes out, there's only going to be a few real Christians sticking to that bag. The rest is really going to go wrong. I'm not scaring anybody. Everybody here has read, everybody here prays and, and knows an understanding of the book of Revelation and how it ties in with Daniel. Everybody understands to a certain point, and we're all at different levels. We're all on different journeys. I'm not you. If you want to see you, you have to look in the mirror. And so we all come from these different things, but there's nothing greater for me other than sitting down sharing a meal with people I love than to sit down and talk and pray. What about your kids? You know, what better way to hurt God than his kids? That's you and I. But I want you to know, I, I don't, I'm not one of these people that, that think um, I'm being oppressed or I'm some sort of victim. Stuff just happens. 
You know, it's not, it, it's just, it just happens. You can find fault and blame anybody you want. But it's not our fault. We were born into what? We were born into this planet. We were born into sin. And so kind of we can blame, you know, Adam and Eve. I mean, look at their kids. They killed each other. I mean, the first, second generation of humanity in anger because of disobedience, he was angry and killed his brother. I just had a conversation with a brother yesterday. Didn't go any way but sideways. Real similar situation. So, open your eyes. Pray. Be aware. But there's got to be a balance of intellect, spirituality, and common sense. But it's not our fault because we were born into sin. We are sinners. Yes, we have options. That's how we're made. Look at this week's lesson. God says, go here, take this person, go do that. A lot of them, instead of converting the ones they were supposed to bring with them and teach them, became like the the people that they went to go see or visit or live with. Isn't that kind of what we can do here? Our family, our friends, visiting other churches. Don't get sucked in, you know. Stick to your guns, figuratively speaking. But it's, it's how we're made. We're sinners. And no matter what, we have options and choices. And our, our enemy really isn't AI. It's a tool. It is a tool. But evil itself is our enemy. Satan is our enemy. Evil is our enemy. And our resurrection and going to heaven is going to be the witnessing of the end of sin. It's going to be the witnessing of sin, including death. It's so easy to take that first step. All we have to do is repent. Just repent. Just ask Jesus Christ to forgive us, humble and open our hearts, and just ask him to teach us his ways. And try and listen. You can't, you can't, I can't, I, I don't want to get too excited here, but um, some people can have their feet up with a TV on, reading a book, playing video games, you know, I can't do that. I'm one of those guys that goes to the back room, got to have it quiet, kind of like a library. It's frustrating for my wife sometimes because, you know, I kind of like it quiet when I'm reading and studying and, and I'm, you know, I'm not like other people. I'm me. So as simple as I am, that's the track I'm on. But it works for me. And I do want to read and we are right back to our references. We're going to be out here a little early. But it's okay. Everything that happens is not always okay, but it can be. So I ask for your prayers. I ask for us to humble ourselves amongst ourselves, to forgive ourselves, and to forgive each other to be what God asks us to be. I'm not up here to pound down anybody. That's common. I mean, I worked for the military for a lot of years after I got out of the military. And, it, you know, it's, it, I don't want to say it was a sewage line, but it's not real pleasant. And you have to separate yourself. I've had pastors tell me, you did the right thing, separating yourself from certain types of people. I had other people just read me the riot act because I wasn't witnessing. Well, you, you weren't there. I was. Did the best I could with what I had. And here we all are. So, let's end with a benediction and our closing song will be, and we are early. <laughs>